guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to do an update to a very popular video I did a few weeks ago titled Husband Shocks Wife by Laying Down the Law About the Marriage, Lack of Bedroom Fund, Etc. And guys, in that story, which was really long, like 35 minutes, but and I'm amazed that you guys watch those long ones, but they're darn good. That was about the guy he was married. And in the beginning, when he was dating her and everything, everything was great. He was acting like a masculine man. He was a leader in the relationship. And of course, because he acted that way, she was very feminine, very attracted to him. All the good qualities that a guy would want in a girl. Eventually, they got married. Things were still cool. And then he lost his job, fell into a really bad depression, and he stopped being the guy he was when he first started dating her relationship and got married. And their uh, good relationship went down the toilet real quick because he stopped being the masculine man that he was and who she married. And, uh, and predictably, so did the bedroom fun. And this guy got into his downward spiral. He really was lost for a while because he just wasn't himself, gained weight, wasn't on his purpose. But eventually, he starts to get his man card back. He gets a job where he's working with a lot of uh, tough blue-collar guys that pretty much knocked him right out of his depressive funk. He starts getting his man card back. And slowly but surely, he then pretty much lays down the law with her. And if you all remember, he has a mother that is an old school effinist, but not like the harpies of today. She gave him some really good advice and pretty much said, look, if you're not hooking up, you're not, in a, you're not in a marriage. He goes back to the wife, lays down the law, and he gets resistance from her because for a long time he wasn't being the man that he used to be. But eventually lay down the law, says pretty much if we're not sleeping together, we're basically roommates, and we're getting divorced. And let's just say, after she uh, had a lot of a resistance, she saw he was serious, and guess what? Things are back on track. And he left the story where things were going good. And also, you know, he had a couple kids, and he really got his uh, back to the place he wanted to be. Now, this is an update where he lets us know how things are going, but also responding to a lot of questions you guys have. Because it was a very popular video, there were a ton of comments, and he wanted to address all those things. So it starts off, he says, uh, Hi, SSM. I'm glad you read the story about me and Amanda saving our marriage. I've read a bunch of comments and wanted to respond to some of the comments that kept coming up in the video from subscribers and you. Amanda and I wanted to tell you some funny stories to show that we have fixed the problems that nearly destroyed our marriage. Uh, yes, she does watch your channel with me sometimes. She's not a regular like I am because this is a men's channel and Amanda is, in fact, a woman. But she appreciates your commentary. She wants me to use the lessons here to teach our daughters what men actually want and how men should actually behave. Now on to the responses. Well, welcome Amanda. Glad you're here to watch the show. We need more we need more women out there that are traditional and old school that recognize the problems of today with, with the gals and also the feedback to help guys start growing a pair. I do my part here to help share stories, offer advice from a guy in his mid-40s that's been around the block because a lot of young guys out there in particular, they need that guidance. They need that masculine man in their life to set them on the right path, and they don't have it. And I think that's a contributing factor to a lot of problems in our society right now. Anyhow, he says here, Amanda wanted to... Addressing one of the issues about Amanda wanting to, uh, to or did she cheat, uh, there have been a fair number of comments saying that essentially... If it took Jen and Amy to stop Amanda from cheating, then she actually made the decision to cheat, and that I should have left. Uh, this is misreading of the situation. SSM was right. Amanda threw herself into childcare when I lost my job. She turned to Jen and Amy for emotional support. Jen and Amy were her good friends, and there was some, some people thought maybe that she was cheating on him, but her friends did everything they could to make sure that she uh, didn't go down that path. So these are good friends. Uh, some, something most men don't understand about women is that they, they are emotionally uh, communal people. Men, men tend more towards being emotionally solitary. This is why you see women going with the flow so often in a lot of situations, especially emotional ones. Amanda chose to seek emotional support from good, stable women instead of from wild and reckless ones. That's a decision that kept her from making other bad decisions. She knew she was vulnerable and chose to avoid tempting situations. Sometimes it's a strength to know where you are weak. Well, I'm glad it worked out that way because if she started hanging out with a bunch of gals that were single or a bunch of gals that uh, were married and unhappy too and wanted to start fooling around, who knows? Maybe she wouldn't have, but you just never know. But most women, 
just like most people, are sheep. And they're going to do what everybody else is doing. If that means cheating, open relationships, any bullshit like that, a lot are going to do that. Or if you hang around ones that are obviously traditional and loyal and have good good upbringing, they will uh, go down that path too. So I'm glad it worked out that way. Damn sun shining here on my face. Next question. It says here, wow, this marriage almost failed. He says, yes, it did. But here's a secret about all marriages. They all nearly fail. That includes the ones like my parents have and, other, my, and uh, one her parents have. I'm going to be honest and say that marriage is very, very tough. It takes 100% effort from both sides. And you constantly have to choose the other person even when you don't want to look at them. Marriage is not for everyone. If you have doubts, then don't do it. Do not confuse this to mean that you have to put your wife on a pedestal. Putting anyone on a pedestal is a bad idea, and if you do it, do it to your wife, then your marriage will end in disaster. 100%, bro. Yes. Marriages are tough. Marriages uh, take two people to, to make it work. And a lot of these stories I do, it's, it's the guy trying to make it work, and the guy putting the, the wife on the pedestal. Big freaking mistake. However, you do need to put a lot of effort into making a marriage work. If the woman isn't worth the effort, then either be single or find the one that is. Well, sadly, good luck in today's world, especially for the young guys that are in their 20s, late teens, 20s, early 30s, with the selection of the TikTok generation out there right now trying to find a gal that's worth it. Another uh, question from the uh, comment section was, uh, this marriage is transactional. He says here, all marriages are. There are only two people that I will love no matter what they do. Those are my kids. Amanda knows that there are lines she cannot cross, or I will leave her and not look back. Exactly, brother. I've been saying that since day one. Each side of the marriage has responsibilities to the other. If marriage didn't work like that, then there would be no point in having a marriage. Some guys are fine with, with the, their lives without women. In that case, stay single. If you gain no benefit from a transaction, then you should not do it. That goes for marriage as well. Yeah, all marriages are transactional. All marriages are business deals. Let's be honest here. A lot of people wouldn't like me saying that, but it's the freaking truth. The problem is, is that in terms of that business deal, it's a shitty business deal for men. Because men... in nowadays with the marriage laws and the family courts, in essence, are like second-class citizens. So it, the women can make out like bandits if there's a divorce, and, well, over 60% of the time it is here in the West, when the guy gets really screwed. So it's not a good deal. But, yes, it is transactional. Uh, why is Jen non-romantic? Jen, he mentioned, is a, the wife's friend, and it seemed like she just... I don't know, the, the female version of walking away, just as she's not either, she's not into dudes, or I don't know what, but he'll explain. He says, simply put, I don't know. I know that something happened to her in high school or college that made her decide to stay single, but I don't know what it was. Amanda does know. She and Jen have been friends since the first grade, but Amanda has not told me, and I will not drag it out of her. Generally, I, I don't like my wife keeping secrets. However, this is not Amanda's secret to share. I respect the person who has their friends back, so I leave this alone. That secret about her friend has no part of your life or business. So that is, she's keeping the secret for a friend. So I respect that. And let's be honest, it really isn't your business. You can be curious, but it's not your business. It's possible that Amy, Amanda's other friend, also does not know what happened since she did not meet Amanda and Jen until college. I don't talk to Amy very much since she's married friend of my wife. It would be uncomfortable if we got too friendly, so I'm unsure what Amy knows about this. Yeah, you shouldn't be getting too friendly with your wife's friends. Just she, just like she shouldn't be getting too friendly with your male friends. Now, I want to tell you a story that shows how things have changed with Amanda and I. Alright, cool. Some updates. Uh, this is a funny story that came to mind when I watched the story of Anne and her failure at using a push mower. That video was so popular. That's what the guy made his, his wife pretty much. He made her mow the lawn because she was an effinist or started acting like an effinist and let's just say it didn't work out very well. And if you guys didn't see that video, check it out. He says here, that's a funny story came to mind, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was spring of 2020 and the bug was in full swing. All the restrictions that were put in place stayed absolutely, played absolute havoc on our logistic plans rewarding aircraft maintenance schedules and flight schedules. I was working a ton of hours trying to come up with new plans and schedules only to have someone else test positive and have to remake the plans again. Since it was spring, it was lawn mowing season. 
I do not like mowing our lawn, which is about three quarters of an acre. For me, it is the definition of a chore. Uh, something mildly unpleasant that must be done for life to happen. Amanda knew this and also saw all the insane hours that I was working. After a few weeks, I finally got a weekend off. I was excited and Amanda had planned an outing for us and our kids. Amanda wanted to show some appreciation for my hard work and decided to mow the lawn for me. Oh, this is going to be good, particularly if it's a push mower. I loved mowing the lawn when I was a teenager. It was great. And it was a great uh, time to think and all that. It was good exercise. Now I live in a condo and the complex takes care of all that. But, uh, but if I had a big house, I would probably do it some of the times. But then again, I'm busy all the time, so I'd probably hire somebody. But watching women mow the lawn can be pretty funny. Uh, I use a push mower and we have a fairly hilly yard. But Amanda decided she could handle it. Oh, this should be good. So she goes out that Friday while I'm at the office and attempts to get to work. She had trouble almost immediately since she couldn't get the mower started. Amanda is stubborn sometimes, and so she persisted. She did eventually get the mower started and start working on the backyard. This was much harder than she expected. According to her, it took her longer to mow just the backyard than it takes me to mow our entire yard. Once Amanda saw this, uh, she gave up. So, about the whole thing nowadays, the mindset that a uh, woman can do anything a man can do and better. There are some jobs that are just better that guys do, and some jobs that women are better off for doing as well. Doesn't mean she can't mow the lawn, because obviously she did, but it's going to take her a lot longer, because with a push mower, a lot more strength to do so. Now, you got some push mowers that will assist you, but still, it's not. It's, it's different. Uh, when I got home that night, she showed me half the, the, of the yard that she had mown and asked with a goofy grin that told me she was kidding if I was proud of her. I laughed and said I was and thanked her for the effort she made to help me. She was gracious as well and said that she didn't want to do that for, form of helping. She didn't want to do that form of helping the next time I have crazy hours. Instead, she offered help in other ways, which sounded pretty good to me. What are these other ways you have in quotations? I have a pretty good idea what other ways are and that is the trick has been going on pretty much since uh, the beginning of humanity uh, for some reason I find myself looking forward to overtime a lot more now when I showed Amanda the video about Anne trying to mow the lawn her response was something along the lines of what woman thinks she can use a heavy push mower over hills and stuff for an entire acre unless she's an Olympic weightlifter exactly and that pretty much was the same situation with that video that uh I did a few weeks ago, which was so popular. In fact, I'm going to post a link there. I know a lot of you guys saw it, but in case you didn't, you guys will get to see it. It's pretty darn funny. It's not a long one, but it's a good one. But anyhow, bro, I'm really glad to hear that things are going well. Look what it took. You're laying down the law, but getting your man card back. And obviously, I'm sure that there have been times when that man card has been tested to make sure you are that guy once again. So continue on on your path. You learn from your mistakes, and now your story, both primarily the other story, will help a lot of guys out there recognize that and move forward. So keep doing what you're doing, and I hope you guys, you crazy kids, uh, have a good future together. And I hope you can raise your kids in a good way that uh, they don't fall into the trap of today's wacky world here. So, but anyhow, man, best of luck, and I uh, hope to hear from you soon. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. It's a quick one, but I just wanted to provide that update. Be sure to comment down below. Let this guy know what you think about this. Guys, for you married guys out there, how many of your wives mow the lawn? Or for you guys in uh, relationships, how many of your girls mow the lawn? I'd like to know about that. Very often or not very much. And if they do mow the lawn, how does that go? And also, guys, if you've got a good story you'd like to share, by all means, email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just make sure you write it really well, make it easy for me to read, and I'll definitely cover it down the road. And this also goes for articles that'd be good for the channel, crazy, outrageous stories, which I could use on my other channel, the other channel called They Did What. If you guys like the crazy stories with the really outrageous shit, check that out. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.